A smaller patch as 1025 was, a couple of changes did hit the arena, and some new champions emerged. Thankfully, since no one wants to be playing the same old TFT on Christmas, while the old faithful are still here, keeping us company, we can still play with the new kids on the block, lording over our opponents. Guess who it is yet? Hey everyone, and welcome to another Pro Guys TFT video. Today, we're going to be talking about patch 1025's must play comps and why they have been so successful so far. Make sure to play these comps when you can, and you will definitely rise in rank. As with every top comps list, getting the top comp will not guarantee your first place, but it will give you a high enough chance for a top 4 finish, netting you that sweet, sweet LP. Positioning, items and scouting are still your most important tools in this game, working together with your comp in order to give you that shiny first place. In this video, we will talk about each comp, a general playstyle guide, look at items they use, and their positioning. This patch didn't see too many changes, but as spoiled in the intro, we do have a new comp we haven't seen in a while baked in the mix. These comps played well are almost guaranteed top 4s at the moment, so make sure you pay attention and let's kick it off. For our question of the day, have you played any of the comps in the video? What did you think? Before we dive in, I just want to let you guys know, as always, we have a Discord community and a new subreddit that is growing really fast. We have you to thank for that, and want to continue building our community and helping you be a part of it. Make sure you check the link in the description out. With all that said, let's dive right into our top comp for 1025, and it is... Ash. Yeah, just Ash. It's the usual stuff, with not much changing in the composition, but Adept is definitely here to stay and a big part of the comp, as Yona is now a key carry. The key to playing Ash has changed a little bit. Although, as usual, you do rush to 7 and then 8, trying to find, well, Ash, duh, Warwick, and Shen. This time, we have a special mission that actually makes this easier. You can start making some Yone items with any extra rods or tears you have and put them on Kindred. If you can two star her or even use her a chosen, even better. You can use Aphelios if you haven't found Ash or Warwick yet for that juicy hunter synergy. Other than that, you can use any chosen to get to that point, preferably things that can last a while since Kindred is single target. Target. She does so much damage though, that she will either help you lose gracefully or get your win streak into level 7 and 8, especially if she is 2 star or even chosen as we said. Make sure you do get another kindred, which you can keep for the synergy for when you get a Yona. If it's a chosen kindred, you either greet it out and keep her in until you find Yona, or you play as normal, sell her when you get to level 8 and roll down for better stuff, maybe an Ash chosen. The items can go on something you're currently using but can sell when Yona comes by. The comp's final form only needs level 8, but due to the abundance of legendaries in it, going to level 9 is not a bad idea. Follow usual procedure and get to level 9 between 6-1 and 6-3, usually by spending most of your gold. Then you can roll to find some of the legendaries. You can replace them before that with similar champions of the same class like Cassio or Yumi for Zillion, Kennen for Azir, and any good synergistic champion that can use Yone items like Kindred. Positioning is fairly classic Ash, but pay attention to Yona. You can mirror the Ash, Zillion and Azir on the other side if you want to protect from assassins like Diana or Zed, but make sure you spread your adepts to cover some ground and take individual aggro. Yona can reset aggro by ulting, and the reason you put him in the middle is to ult faster. Ash should use her favorite Infinity Edge and Guardian Angel, with the third item being either Giant Slayer or Last Whisper. Due to her spell, Giant Slayer wins out a bit, but Last Whisper is not bad by any means, especially after its last buff. Now Yona... Well, his favorite items are Gunblade, Blue Buff and Guardian Angel, but he can make a lot of things work. Remember, he shares items with Kindred. If you get too many attack speed items or something, you can alternatively itemize Warwick. Now, let's move on to our next con. Last week's top comp has been knocked off first place, into second, so not much change there. Let's iterate how Dusk works for the new viewers and you lovely people who have trouble remembering. Be careful, the comp has Riven in it, so high profile outplays are expected. Dusk relies a lot on the items you get, as well as the chosen you get in your level 7 or 8 rolldown. You can actually start sort of forcing it by playing Vayne and Thresh early into your comp and slowly finding the rest of the units. Alternatively, you see a lot of swords, perfect gen items, and then find any of the 4 cost Dusk, that's pretty good. Still, the 20% spell power is strong early and can help you in tough spots. 
You will always be looking for your Riven, Casio and Gin with Aatrox as a side dish. Depending on chosen, you might not even need Aatrox. Yes, Cultist is great, but you can play with more combination, always depending on what chosen you get. Speaking of chosen, this comp can actually go on without one for quite a while. I've won a couple of times in games where my chosen came really late and affected only the last couple of fights. What prompts you into the comp fully can be a task chosen, uh, and there's nothing wrong with that either. Looking for a good chosen at level 8 is part of the playstyle for this comp, but it's not always true that you will find something. There are many viable alternatives to the usual comp depending on your chosen, so don't be scared to go for any of the existing synergies champions within your comp, for example Adept. Riven and Jin used to be your main units, and Sharpshooter Jin Chosen is another good option, as is his cultist version, at least until you get Zillion. The main difference this patch is that Yone, like on the Ash comp, is definitely part of this one and you want some items too. So, like with Ash, if you're doing well, going 9 with Dusk is really strong. You can even sell that Chosen you have if it isn't essential and hunt for the legendary one, even Yone. <laughs> Remember that since it's a less defined comp than Ash, who can start earlier with Kindred, this comp is usually up in the air until level 8, maybe 7 if you get lucky. Thus, Fortune is a good way of amassing some gold and Jinx has synergy with Vayne and can hold Yone items until you get some. Position for this is classic, with Yona being the new kid and being a bit separate from the rest. It's like high school. You have some really strong spells in the front line, and if Yona doesn't have someone directly ahead of him, he will veer towards Aatrox. If Aatrox uses his spell before Yona, even more targets will be pulled into the Yona spell, resulting in a massacre. All the while, Jin is firing from the back. This is sort of the scenario you want to make happen, and you can mirror position on the other side to adjust for opponents. Jin, as usual, the gritty terrorist that he is, wants his BF item triplets, GA, Infinity Edge, Last Whisper, with a Giant Slayer put in there if you get too many swords, and not enough gloves. Riven likes a GA, Ionic, and X, which can be Hand of Justice, Bramble, Dragon's Claw, and so on. However, with Yona arriving, Riven can take a back seat as far as items are concerned. Ionic is still a very good build on her, better than on Yona, but it's better to get some items for Yona like Blue Buff and Gunblade and a GA. You'll notice Warlords is in a must play. You will also notice the scriptwriter is not drunk. How does this compute? Well, it's in the title. Keepers. They make Warlords go brrrr. And here we are to teach you how to master it and unleash Katarina on your enemies. Nobody expected the surprise Warlords. This comp is fairly simple to get into, just get a Warlord chosen. You need it to unleash the full power of the comp, at least at level 8, at which all the comps we give you guys are, since level 9 is a luxury you cannot replicate every game this set. Finding your Garen, Java, or Vi chosen early and going for it is advised here, and be careful, it's gotta be Warlord, none of their other traits. It's actually great to have a build for those chosen, as they are often seen and passed in the shop. With any of these chosen, your opener should be really, really strong. Keep amassing Warlords and keep an eye out for Keepers and Katarina specifically. If you can't find Cat, Kindred, once again, is actually a pretty good replacement until you do, as they use similar items well and it can help you tie it over until you manage 6 Warlords. 6 Warlords is a big power spike, especially if everyone is already fully stacked. Make sure you have an Assassin, preferably Pike, to aid Katarina's damage and provide extra CC. Cannon should be the Keeper of choice for 2 Keeper and at level 6 the comp can be 6 Warlords, 2 Keepers, 2 Assassins, destroying people left and right with Kata. Your next 2 projects are getting to 8 and finding Riven and Azir, which rounds out the comp, both power-wise and Keeper-wise. Your 4 Keepers will shield your frontline, your Katarina and themselves, giving Warlords a bit more survivability, which they sorely need, in order to dish out their damage. Warlords, in their fully stacked form, are not unlike Cybernetics of set 3, essentially getting a free item on all of them due to the, all the stats. Giving them more survivability allows them to use those stats even better. Two things you should be careful with this one. First, don't play Xin Zhao. As petty buffs as this poor chap has gotten, he is tragically weak and the only replaceable unit. Vi, assuming Garen is usually your chosen, is actually better than him due to her awesome armor shred. Too bad Zen, maybe next time. Second, careful of mystic players, especially 4 mystic. You might want to itemize some heavy damage or invest in an Ionic Spark to get through all the magic resistance. Most if not all of your damage is magic, so Mystic counters you hard, but with Keeper you have more time to dish it out. Going to level 9 and adding a Dusk Champion or fighting a Dusk Spatula can be pretty good, as it enhances your comp to its maximum potential and adds more damage. 
keep a comps use positioning as pretty much part of the playstyle, so pay attention. Frontline is there as normal, the three keepers shielding each other as much as possible in the middle and two of them shielding cap. You can go for a more diamond formation, but it opens you up to AoE a lot more and doesn't spread aggro as well, resulting your frontline is dying one by one and quickly. Azir can put his soldiers around him in the corner and wail on people, with shielded soldiers protecting him from initial assassins. And so it goes. Katarina doesn't need too much switching around as she's kind of like Kai'Sa in set 3 where the middle is a decent position due to the AoE nature of her spell. If you need to target something in the corners, at least make sure you switch the keepers around to follow her and still give her a good shield. Items are fairly flexible in this comp. Got too much attack speed? Itemize Azir. Got too much AP? Itemize anyone you want. Got GA? Give it to Riven. Ionic Spark also works extremely well to boost your damage against high MR targets. As your main carry though, Katarina, her core items are Gunblade and Quicksilver. The third item, while it can be AP, like Ravadon's, but it can also be things like Titan's Resolve, which allows her to build mana quicker, be tankier and deal a lot of damage once it's stacked. Her spell does stack it, so she can be pretty bonkers after casting it. That's it for our must play comps. Without further ado, let's move into the honorable mentions. Duelists are here, strong as usual, but the Yone contest is hurting them quite a bit. When they work, they work really well though. The Kalista Bugface last patch solidified her as a strong side carry as well. Ninja Shade is still going strong here and there. Definitely a decent top 4 comp. You play when you get Zed chosen and go from there. The K nerf affected it, but not too much. Elderwood is doing quite well, but you gotta get to 9. Even with the buffs to it, at best it tied you over better to 9 Elderwood, with Set being the spatula target. That's it for this video. We will be uploading every week on Wednesday and Sunday. Thanks for watching and make sure to check out our TFT content on YouTube and our high elo coaches on proguys.com. If you have any feedback for us, comment below and we'll be very happy to read what you have to say. Now get out there and farm some LP using the must play comps you saw here today.